Just do something to tell you who I am, you know? Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and R. And I know it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, but with DC Fandom coming up this weekend, I wanted to at least get one or two of these videos out before the weekend to kind of let you know that I will be covering stuff from DC Fandom. I'll be doing a couple trailer reactions for you guys, and I'll mainly be covering news from the Gotham Knights video game. So anyway, so Injustice. Let's talk about some animated films. That'll be the focus of this video. And then in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about the Court of Owls and our DC fandom, like kind of what I'm gonna be talking about at DC, or you know, uh, looking at at DC fandom, or what I'm most excited for. That'll be the next episode. This one, we got images from Injustice, which is coming out very soon. I'll have the release dates right there. And the bummer is a, a review copy was sent to me and it came today, it said it was delivered. But unfortunately, it wasn't there uh, when I went to check. So I don't know if it was a mistake. Maybe it was something where they got to my apartment, and they realized they forgot the package, and maybe they'll bring it tomorrow. Um, normally, I don't really see a lot of package theft around here. I mean, there's all these you know, buildings around. I see uh, packages in front, of, in front of their doors for hours or for days sometimes. So I don't really suspect that. I, you know, I try not to suspect the worst in people, especially when I don't have any evidence of it. So I don't think it's anything that someone stole. Uh, but if they did, I, you know, I hope they enjoy it. Uh, I'll still buy it when it comes out if I, if it is not going to show up. But hopefully it'll show up soon so I can uh, have that review out for you on the day the movie comes out. But if I'm late with the review, just know it's because I have to, you know, I'll have to buy my own copy after my next check and I'll review it for you guys as soon as possible. But I'm excited for Injustice because if you go back to early days of my uh, streaming and stuff, you'll see that I played Injustice 1 and then when Injustice 2 came out, I went to like a big uh, GameStop party for it, entered a tournament. I lost but badly, by the way, um, but I had, I had a fun time playing for sure. And it was a great event, so I have a video for that and I think I have a video for me interviewing my friend Erica Luttrell who does the voice of Cheetah in Injustice 2. I have uh, videos for both of those, I think, on the Seek and Destroy vlogs. So I'll find the links to those. I'll put them down below if you want to check those out. So I am a longtime Injustice fan, so this movie coming out, I'm very pumped for. And if you don't know the story, we are going to get into spoilers, but I'll try to be very brief. Um, so uh, yeah, so go read the comic books, go play the video games, whatever you got to do, go check it out or go watch the movie, uh, you know, when it comes out, uh, because uh, I'm excited for it. Though the animation, though, is a little interesting. Like everyone has really accentuated jaw lines and, and cheekbones and stuff. So you'll see here with Joker, he's got a very angular head. Uh, what I like though about that is that it does separate it from the previous animated films, which is clearly what they want to go for. They want you to know that this is a mature rated world that we're you know about to enter and that it is very different and that some of these characters are going to act differently too. So it makes sense that they kind of messed it with some of their uh, or used a completely different animation style for it. Because that Archer style that they're using now for all their you know, shared universe movies. I like that a lot, but this is nice and important to show that it's different. So we have Joker here in this first image. And the reason we have Joker is because this whole story starts with Joker, right? Uh, he finds a way to, I guess, uh, use fear toxin and kryptonite or something mixed together from Scarecrow um, and Lex Luthor, I guess, and use it to poison Superman's mind and essentially get Superman to kill Lois Lane on accident, of course, because Superman is, you know, hopped up and poisoned and stuff. So he doesn't know what's going on. And he accidentally brings Lois uh, into outer space where she dies. And not only does she die, but she has their child inside of her that dies too. And then at that same moment while he's gone, Metropolis explodes and almost everyone in Metropolis dies. So this is literally like the worst day in the world for Superman. It kind of made me think of Killing Joke where... You know, uh, basically Joker tries to get Jim Gordon to crack. He's like, I'm going to abuse your daughter. I'm going to do all these horrible things. And I'm going to do it because I, I want to prove to Batman that there's no good people. That it only takes one bad day to ruin a, a good person. And it didn't work for Jim Gordon. He he stuck through those horrible things um, and, and, and made it through the other side and still remained a good person and didn't give up his morals. But uh, Superman here... That's a lot to deal with. I mean, I mean, it was a lot for Gordon to deal with for sure as well. And Barbara and everyone who went through that horrible incident and in killing joke. This is also a horrible incident. And it's um, it's it, to have Superman responsible for it, as I think is the moment that really broke Superman is that it's his fault. He, he knows or it, he's like, I wasn't strong enough to see through this charade. So Superman kills Joker. Uh, right in front of Batman and thus begins, you know, this descent. Uh, and so that's not when Superman, I wouldn't say he becomes evil. He just changes his morals a little bit um, to be a little bit more stern and strict. 
Um, but he ends up becoming kind of a dictator in a way because he just doesn't want another day like that to ever happen. And he goes to every length to make that. And of course, something like that probably wouldn't happen again to that degree, but he wants to be sure that it won't. So, uh, so this is definitely a different side of Superman. So we have a lot of images here. We have the Green Lantern here. Uh, I think this is him saving everyone from the explosion in Metropolis. Um, then we have Superman busting in, breaking through the wall. This is right before he kills the Joker. Uh, and of course, Joker's laughing because he knows what's going to happen. He knows he's going to die, but he doesn't care. He's like, I don't care that I'm about to get killed because I won. I, I beat him. And if he kills me, that's even further proof that I beat him. So yeah, the next shot we have here is actually with Wonder Woman in the front and the foreground, and you have the other Justice League members behind her. I love that we see Shazam and Hawkman here, and Captain Adam. I'm so excited for Captain Adam. I love that character so much. Uh, and then we got Cyborg and Aquaman also in the background. Uh, so this is cool. And again, the animation style, like everyone's very pronounced faces and stuff. Um, so just giving that, that look to this to show that this is serious. <laughs> they're, they're getting serious on this one. And this is another great shot. This is Oliver Queen here, Green Arrow, who I'm also a big fan of, uh, getting ready to shoot someone. I think he's about to shoot this character, Harley Quinn, um, and she looks great too. I like this design for her. It's obviously a lot of these designs are based off video games, so I'm really digging the, the look of this. I think they're doing a good job. Um, again, we have Joker here talking to Batman in the interrogation room. This is pretty much one of the only scenes we'll probably see Joker in unless they do any flashback stuff. But yeah, this is a very pivotal scene. This kind of starts the story here. Um, so yeah, crazy. Uh, but then, oh, hey, look at this Plastic Man. I love Plastic Man. What a goofy character. And uh, I guess he's going to have a, a part to play in this too. So that's cool. Um, there's a great version of him in one of the comics, I think, with New 52. Um, I like some of the older Plastic Man stuff because he's kind of goofy and, and kind of tongue in cheek. But a serious version of him because he's kind of an ex-criminal too. They did a version of him in Suicide Squad in New 52 where he actually crawled into someone's mouth and then came out and like killed them. Uh, it's really intense. Uh, so I don't know if we'll see that kind of thing going on. Um, but this is neat because this is a design of Mirror Master for, like that looks like it's a design that was used before in previous animated stuff. Because I don't think we've seen Mirror Master, I think in the comic books of Injustice, but I don't think in the in the video game. I don't think he's been a playable character. So this is just cool because it looks like uh, Wonder Woman is using... Uh, Raven, it looks like, from the Teen Titans to summon or pull out Mirror Master from his dimension. And I don't know why. I guess we'll find out. Maybe he's hiding uh, from Superman or I don't know what's going on. But uh, maybe this is the, the world underneath Superman's rule and they're willing to go to any lengths to find the supervillains and capture them. So that could be what's happening here. Um, this is a great shot because you have Mr. Terrific here with Superman. And I'm wondering, I'm like, is this before Superman turns or is this after? Is this like, you know, when Superman is essentially ruling the world? Is Mr. Terrific on his side? That, that'd be very interesting because Mr. Terrific is kind of the third smartest man in the world, as, the, as they say. So, um, so I'm curious to see, you know, what role he'll play in this because he's a great, great character. So that's all the images I have, but I do have some casting information here because we have Justin Hartley who played Green Arrow in Smallville, which is really cool. He's actually going to be doing the voice of Superman in this one. And Anson Mount, who played Black Bolt uh, for the Inhumans, which I a show I still haven't seen. I have an Inhumans tattoo, a Black Bolt tattoo, but I have not seen the, uh, the show at all. So I'm sorry, Anson Mount. I do love you. You're a great actor. Um, but he's going to be doing the voice of Batman. So I'm very excited to hear his voice for Batman. He is super awesome. Uh, then we also have Janet Vaughn. Barney, who's going to be doing the voice of Wonder Woman, Brandon Michael Hall as Cyborg, Kevin Pollack as the Joker and Jonathan Kent, uh, so double dip in there, uh, Anika Noni Rose, uh, who's going to be playing Catwoman, Reed Scott from the Venom movies, who plays uh, Dan, Dr. Dan, that's really cool, he's going to be voicing Green Arrow and Victor Zaz in a scene, so that's really cool, I'm glad Reed Scott's going to be a part of this, uh, go Venom team, right? Um, then we also have Edwin Hodge, who's going to be playing Mr. Terrific and Killer Croc, Jillian Jacobs, who's going to be doing the voice of Harley Quinn, Oliver Hudson as Plastic Man, Laura Bailey as Lois Lane, and Ramakushna, which that's cool that Ramakushna is going to be mentioned in this because hopefully that means we get something with Dead Man, maybe. I would love to see Dead Man. That'd be great. Um, I always love Dead Man. Then we also have Farhan Tahir, who's going to be playing the voice of Ra's al Ghul, Derek Phillips, who is Nightwing and Aquaman, Yuri Lowenthal, who's going to be doing the voice of Mirror Master, Flash, and Shazam, uh, Zach Callison as Damian and Jimmy Olsen, Brian T. Delaney as Green Lantern, Fred Tadishore, who's going to be doing the voice of Captain Adam, and Andrew Morgado as the voice of Mirror Master Soldier. So there, there you go. Great team, great cast. Uh, Matt Peters is going to be directing this. Uh, he actually did Justice League uh, Apocalypse, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. So he's going to be directing this movie. So that's really awesome. He's an intense director, and that movie was really awesome. Normally, I don't really dig the rated 
are mature animated stuff that they've done. Uh, some of it, I feel like they're just, I don't know. I, I, I if some of it, I feel like doesn't have to be rated R um, to get the, the story across. But uh, but for me, for that one, yeah, it needed to be rated R and it was awesome. It was so well done. I love that one. Uh, and this also has a screenplay by Ernie Altbacher, who did the screenplay for Batman Hush, which I know is controversial. A lot of people didn't like the animated movie version of it with the twist at the end. But I did because I felt like it wasn't really that much of a twist or a departure from the comic. And I think it cleaned up a few things that I didn't like about the comic and streamlined it a bit. So for me, I liked the Batman Hush ending, but I know some people didn't. Uh, but I still think he's got you know enough to work with here um, from the video game that I, I'm hoping we're in for a wild ride with this. And for producers, we have Jim Krieg, we have Alessa Ornelas, who worked on Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, uh, Rick uh, Morales, who also worked on the Mortal Kombat Legends animated stuff, and Sam Register, who's uh, who's been on pretty much involved with DC animated stuff for decades, I think. I think like two decades now. So I'm excited. I can't wait for this. I mean, it comes out October 19th on Blu-ray, digital, like all platforms, but they're also going to have a panel at DC Fandom on October 16th at 10 a.m. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you're following DC Fandom and all the news that comes out for that because it looks like they're going to do a panel with the cast and everything to learn more about the movie. So I'm pumped. And I think last year at DC Fandom, I think they showed off an animated movie for free. I don't know if they'll do that this time because I feel like this is a, a, going to be a banger and I think a lot of people are going to support this. So I'm just, uh, you know, I'm excited to watch the panel when I when it comes out, but I'm excited to watch this movie too. And so even if I lost my review copy or if it never really shows up, hopefully it does. Um, but if it doesn't, you know, I'm okay to buy this. I mean, I, I actually wrote the guy at Warner Brothers and I said, look, I don't know what happened. I just want to let you know I didn't get it. But, you know, don't, don't worry about sending me another copy. I'm happy to support. Uh, I've been very blessed and, and I've been very grateful. The stuff you have sent me in the past but don't, don't worry about it because I know they have only a limited number of stuff they can send out. And I'm like, don't worry. I just want you to know that it may or may not show up, but uh, but doesn't matter because either way, I'm getting this movie. I'm watching the hell out of this movie for sure. I'm so pumped for this. I couldn't be more excited and uh, I will definitely review it for you as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching the show. And I do have DC Fandom stuff coming up for you guys this weekend. So make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss out on DC Fandom coverage. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.